Welcome to ECA Limo Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed types of charges and we said we have two main types of charges that is, positive charges and negative charges. We also looked at how you can charge materials either positively or negatively by induction, separation method, and by contact method. However, we did not discuss the instrument which you can use to detect the type of charge that the material acquires and even the amount of charge that a material acquires. In this lesson, we are going to discuss an instrument we call a gold leaf electroscope and we are going to realize that this is the only instrument that can be used to detect the amount of charge in a material and even the type of charge that a material has. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe what a gold leaf electroscope is and then state the main parts of a gold leaf electroscope and then finally explain the functions of the parts of a gold leaf electroscope. Now, what is a gold leaf electroscope? A gold leaf electroscope is a device which is used to detect electric charges. As you can see on the screen, it consists of a brass cup which is connected to a metal rod. And on the metal rod, we have a metal plate. And adjacent to a metal plate, we have a gold leaf or simply a leaf. Now, when a charged object is brought near the metal rod, the light charges in the electroscope repel each other, causing the gold leaf to diverge. Now, this divergency indicates the presence of charges, as we are going to see later. But before we proceed, it's important for us to know the main parts of a gold leaf electroscope. And on the screen, we have two diagrams. One represents the three dimension diagram of a gold leaf electroscope and then the second diagram represents the cross section part of a gold leaf electroscope so we are going to look at the main parts of a gold leaf electroscope and the first main part of a gold leaf electroscope is a brass cup and this brass cup we are going to see it is designed and the function of a brass cup and on this brass cup we have a metal rod which is connected to it and this metal rod is uh, is of a good conductor and then below the metal rod we have a metal plate and adjacent to a metal plate we have a leaf we are going to see their functions later then we have an earth connection on the main or on the three dimension diagram you can see the earth here this is the earth and we're going to see its function and then on the cross section part, we have an earth drawn using this diagram or this sketch. This diagram, which is indicated by A, represents an earth. To go back to have that. And then we have a glass window. This glass window is transparent, of reasons we are going to see. And then on the metal rod, we have an insulator which holds the metal rod and supports the metal plate and the leaf. And then finally, we have a metal case, which is going to protect this gold leaf from external uh, factors, which we are going to discuss later. So we can look at the functions of the main parts of a gold leaf electroscope. And the first main part of a gold leaf electroscope that we discussed was a metal case. And a metal case, its function is to protect the leaf from the effects of draft. And draft simply means the flow of air within a room or in a laboratory. Remember, this uh, flow of air can be caused either naturally or artificially. Naturally, it can be caused by wind or temperature differences, or sometimes artificially, it can be caused by fans which are rotating to cool the, or to ensure there is a good condition of air in the laboratory, and sometimes this draft can be caused, or this flow of air can be caused by filtration systems in the laboratory. Remember, 
This leaf is very thin and it can be moved by any slight movement of wind. And it's through this leaf and the plates which are repelling so that they can diverge or converge, then we can detect the presence of charges in materials. So for us to make sure that the, the movement of this leaf is only caused by the charges from a material which is introduced at the cup, then it's very important for us to protect this internal part of this cold leaf from external factors like wind. Another important part of a gold leaf electroscope is a glass window. And the function of the glass window is that it is transparent. It has a property of transparency. It is transparent for observations of the leaf movement to be made without exposing it to the external disturbances. So remember, we are going to use this electroscope and we are going to observe the movement of the leaf. Now, for us to observe this movement of the leaf, then it we must have a transparent media. Now, when we use a glass window which is transparent, then we are going to make observation inside without exposing this leaf to external factors. If we don't have a transparent window, then it means we must open one of the side. And if we open one of the side, then air from outside can move in. And then when it moves in, it can cause uh, the leaf to deflect which will give us a wrong impression of the material which we want to test it is properties either it is charged or not another important a part of the gold leaf electroscope is the brass cap the brass cap is a good conductor and it's the one which is going to receive the charges from the material which we want to test if it is charged or not now this brass cap is circular in shape so that to ensure a uniform distribution of charges on it. If this brass cap is not circular in shape, then charges will only be concentrated at one point of that material. Then we will not get the correct deflection of the leaf. So we make sure that the cap which is used in a gold leaf electroscope is circular in way so that there is uniform distribution of uh, of charges another important part of this gold leaf electroscope is a metal rod this metal rod let's call it a number four this metal rod its function it acts as a conductor which will carry the charges from the cup to the leaf which will make the leaf to diverge so when you introduce the charges you introduce them at the cup the cup will detect the charges they will be conducted through this metal rod to the leaf. So its function, its main function is to conduct these charges from the cup to the leaf. Then another important uh, part of this gold leaf electroscope is the leaf itself. Now this leaf is made of gold in this case, and this, this leaf is suspended at the end of the metal rod. So as you can see, this leaf down here, it is suspended within this metal rod adjacent to the metal plate and it serves an, an indicator. This one is an indicator, it's the one which will indicate as an indicator of electric charges. It diverges when the charged particles are brought close uh, due to the static repulsion. Remember, we are going to see this leaf either uh, uh, moving out or diverging or converging. So when it's going to move out, it means there will be a, a, a repansion between the metal plate and the leaf. We're going to see this shortly. So it's going to indicate the presence of charge by diverging or converging, depending on the type of charge which is brought close to it. Another important part of this gold leaf electroscope is the insulator. This is number five. Is an insulator, and, the, uh, and this insulator separates the metal rod. Look at this. This is the metal rod here, and then this is the insulator. So the function of this insulator is to separate the metal rod from the metal plate, preventing unwanted discharge of the electroscope. Remember, if this um, insulator, if we replace it with a good conductor, 
then the, uh, the charges which will be detected at the cap, they will be conducted when they reach this path. If this part of the insulator is a good conductor, these charges will be conducted to the metal case and then they will be discharged to the RT circuit. So for us to prevent that discharging, then we use an insulator. So the, the, the charges will be moving within the metal rod through into the metal plate and the leaf. And then through that, the leaf will diverge. Another important part of a gold leaf electroscope is the earth connection. Look at this. We have an earth connection here. In this uh, three-dimension diagram, we have an earth here. And in the cross-section part, we have earth, which is indicated uh, by this E. And earth is indicated in books. It is indicated by this sign here. As you can see below here, it's indicated by this sign. And then this sign will have an E. This means it's an earth. So earthing is a process of losing or gaining charges from the earth. So in charge in earthing, you lose charges or gain charges to, from the earth service, and you use a conductor to lose them or to gain them. Now, what type of charges will be moving to the earth or moving from the earth to the electroscope? Remember, we said it's only electrons which can move. So in this, in earthing, we can simply define it as a process of losing electrons to or gaining electrons from the earth service through a conductor. And it's represented using this symbol here. Now, we are going to realize that this earthing is very important, especially in the application part of this electrostatics. Because if you look at the vehicles which are carrying fuel, they have loose chains behind them, and those chains is what we call the earthing. Those chains will channel or will make the electrons, in this case the charges, negative charged particles, which are generated through friction of the moving part of this vehicle to discharge to the earth service, hence preventing these vehicles from blowing up. Uh, due to the charges which are produced. Sometimes those charges can produce sparks which can cause fire. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss how to charge uh, an electroscope positively or negatively by induction and by contact process.